Hi guys, today we are going to take apart a Mikuni carburetor. This is an RX135 carburetor. We are going to take it apart so that we could clean it properly. We would be cleaning this carburetor using an ultrasonic cleaner. So before you start taking it apart, make sure there is no fuel in the carburetor. Uh, what you can do is you can you know, tilt the carburetor upside down for the fuel to drain. Before you start taking it apart, make sure that there is a hole like this, like this one, uh, so that you know you don't lose any parts from the carburetor. Carburetor has a lot of tiny parts and it is very easy to lose them. So we'll start taking it apart by first removing the uh, slide and that is done by removing the top cap, which is also called the mixture chamber top cap. Okay, so you remove it, be very careful while removing it because there is a spring so it might pop out, you know, make sure all the parts are kept in proper places and you don't struggle at the end, then you know, you remove the slide. So usually the slide is, uh, you know, connected to the bike because, you know, there would be a throttle connected to it so there is a wire guide lock also called the spring seat um, this is a very easy to lose part so make sure that you know it's kept in a proper place um, this is the carburetor slide needle there is a circlip at the end so make sure you don't lose that as well this is the complete slide assembly and once that is taken apart Take the idle screw out, uh, idle screw has a spring and there is an o-ring, if you can see the black thing here is an o-ring, make sure that is also kept safe. Then you take uh, the air screw, uh, just like any normal screw, just turn counterclockwise to remove it. Okay, so this also has an o-ring and a spring. Here is the spring. Uh, this one is missing the o-ring. Uh, this is a spare carburetor. A normal carburetor should have the o-ring. Let me see if I have one. I'll show you the o-ring while putting it back. Alright, then we start by removing these four screws. These four screws. All right, so once the screws are taken out, this is the float bowl. The float bowl comes out. There is a float gasket. Remove that as well. And this is the float needle. Once you remove the needle, you can take apart the float. Uh, one thing about this float is uh, this float needle comes with a clip so that it gets attached to this. The float needle uh, has a small tip at the end. Let me see if it focuses. Yeah, it does. This tip has a spring action. So if it's not doing this, um, you just need to replace this. It can't be fixed. So this and the float valve comes as a unit. So this has to be replaced together. Um, this float valve is held by, um, it's an 8 mm thread. So you can just use a 8mm spanner to remove it. Alright, so 
So uh, this is the float valve uh, and there is a small cork washer that is part of this. Make sure you don't lose it. Because this has a very important purpose. You know, it, it ensures that there is an airtight seal here and uh, it also ensures that this uh, threads don't get stripped by over tightening. Alright, so we are going to take the uh, pilot jet out. The pilot jet sits in this uh, hole. So for that you need a regular flathead screwdriver. Uh, this is a very, uh, you need a very tiny screwdriver. I have, uh, so you just put it in and just turn it anti-clockwise and the jet comes out. So I have already taken the jet out. Uh, so there is where it, you know, you just unscrew this. And keep it very safe again, you know, goes without saying. Then you need to take the main jet out. The main jet out. Uh, the main jet is a two-part assembly. Um, there is a, a needle jet and a large main hex. This is the main hex. This part is the needle jet. So let me just. This opens with a six mm uh, span. So there you go. This is the main jet and this is the needle jet. There is an o-ring inside here as well. Take that out. And now we are going to remove the uh, atomizer out of this. So what you need to do is uh, you need to turn the carburetor upside down and tap it from this end using something. Use this tester itself to tap it out. But usually use something less harsh, something with a rounded edge. So. This is the atomizer, keep that aside as well. Removing the atomizer is different in different bikes like uh, for an RX100 and an RX135. You tap it out from the top, uh, that is from this side. For an RD350 you have to tap it out from the bottom. So you know the atomizer has to be tapped out from this side. Um, once all the parts are taken off, what you should ideally do is use an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, we are going to use an ultrasonic cleaner and I'm going to show you how that is done. But in case if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, what you can do is you can buy uh, a liter of uh, brake fluid or you can buy a liter of uh, thinner and you can just dunk this carburetor with all the jets overnight except for except for the float well uh, needle because this uh, might get corroded inside and the spraying action might uh, be lost. So it's advisable not to put this into uh, you know any cleaning uh, solution. So uh, keep this aside. Rest you can put everything like you know you can put the air screws, uh, you can put the you know the needle jet, the main jet, the idle jet, everything including the um, carburetor body and the float bowl. So once you put it in uh, either thinner or brake fluid, leave it overnight um, and next day you can start um, you know, working on it. Um, another top uh, important tip if you're using brake fluid, uh, then um, make sure that it doesn't come in contact with water because brake fluid absorbs water and you know uh, it, it would create more problems. 
um, using thinner is um, slightly better on the carburetor body because um, the fuel inside the carburetor when it ages it turns into varnish and it blocks a lot of um, you know uh, airways and pathways so it is important that um, you use um, something that can take that varnish off so the preferred method is using thinner but uh, brake fluid is best for uh, removing the uh, uh, you know oxidization out of uh, brass articles um, so that, that's what you need to do and uh, you know it's also advisable to have a carburetor cleaner if you can get one if you don't have a carburetor cleaner you can use a thinner you know uh, and put it in a spraying uh, bottle and then you know spray into all these holes generously so if you have a carburetor cleaner use that spray in each of these holes um, very generously and make sure all the um, holes are clean this is the ultrasonic cleaner so what you need to do is you need to fill the cleaning solution in this put the carburetor in close it and set the timer on and just wait for it to be done once it is done inspect the carburetor again if it's clean good if it's not clean again and um, once that is done uh, it's advisable to use compressed air in each of these holes uh, if you do not have access to compressed air, air then um, you can also blow through these holes um, really hard so that any anything which is trapped inside goes away okay so once the uh, cleaning is done every hole is clean um, then we should start putting it back so what we first do is we first install the atomizer um, this atomizer is from my spare carburetor so i'll just show you how to put that into that so this uh, part if you let's see if it focuses um, there's kind of an edge that goes in the bottom um, this which is kind of a flange will go into the top so this side up just insert it in that and use some sort of thing to tap it slightly and now the if you can see it's totally in and from this side you should be able to feel it uh, it should be up you should be able to feel it from this side once that is in install the o-ring onto the needle jet and then tighten it uh, don't go overboard with tightening it just gently tighten it because if you tighten it too much uh, the brass threads will strip the aluminium threads in the carburetor body and that would be a very expensive mistake to fix then you install the main jet so once the main jet is in place next what we need to install is the valve idle valve I mean the float valve so um, this this is the cork washer goes on the float valve and just turn it clockwise to tighten it once it is reasonably tight once the 
float valve is installed then you install the float needle onto the float most of you might not have a float needle like this one uh, this uh, one comes with a clip that you know attaches itself to the float um, but if you do not have this one uh, just put the needle into the uh, float valve and this is probably where you adjust the height of the float once the float height is adjusted uh, and proper you close the float next what you need to do is you need to put the idle jet in so the idle jet goes here and you just tighten it okay so once that is tight we can now close the float bowl so put the gasket make sure the gasket is there don't use um, anabond or others you know liquid gasket makers because this gasket serves a very important purpose that is over tightening of screws and uh, if you over tighten those screws these threads get stripped so make sure you get a gasket okay, so once the bowl is in then you put these four screws in place and you tighten them in a crisscross fashion once uh, that is done put the air screw back make sure the air screw spring is put there is a small o-ring that goes on the um, air screw like I said this is the o-ring uh, and you put the spring in and then install it so what you do is you just tighten it like not like um, super tight but tighten it fully and once it's tightened fully not like super tight but reasonably tight then what you do is you back one and a half turn so if you back it like this this is half turn this is one and now this is one and a half next thing you put is the air screw just install it because this needs to be adjusted on the bike uh, let's assemble the float uh, the slide so this goes in then Right, so that's how you clean a carburetor. Thanks a lot for watching. Please feel free to ask any questions if you have in the comments below and please support the channel. Like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot. We'll come soon with other videos. Thank you.